Hello everyone. Welcome to Umoja Hack 2022. Uh, my name is Darius Mururi. I'm a data scientist at Zindi. Uh, my Zindian name is Briniak. So for those of you who don't know uh, what Umoja Hack is, um, it's the largest uh, inter-university AI hackathon in Africa, uh, where more than 30 countries are participating. Uh, across 200 universities with more than 2,000 students uh, competing. So I've prepared for you a starter notebook for the beginner challenge. So what this starter notebook covers is uh, loading the data to Colab, uh, doing some exploratory data analysis, uh, building a simple model, and then uploading uh, solutions to uh, Zindi. So the first thing you should do is navigate to the Zindi website. Select the competition you want to participate in. And then you join. Uh, after joining you have access to the data which now you can download and then start building our models. So today we'll be using Colab. After downloading the data, then you can upload it to Colab. There's an option to upload data here. So we can look at the task we are trying to solve or the challenge. Uh, some details about this challenge. Um, we are tasked to build a model to predict whether a device or a sensor is faulty or not. So for this challenge, we are trying to provide a solution for Airco. Airco is a company that uh, provides air quality measurements uh, or readings. So the main, the objective of this challenge is uh, to develop a binary classification model to identify and classify faulty sensors. The model that you build will be used by Airco to automatically flag devices that have uh, faulty readings. Some of the things that we go through as I've stated is uh, loading data, some statistical summaries, uh, then we look at how to handle missing values or outliers in the data set. Uh, we'll do some feature engineering and then uh, we'll do also some modeling and uh, creating a submission file that you submit to Zindi. So some of the libraries that we'll use, uh, we have pandas and numpy for data manipulation and then matplotlib and seaborn for visualization and then for modeling we use the sklearn library so the next step is loading data uh, we have been provided with uh, the train data set and the test data set we also have a sample submission file so this is how the train data set looks like um, we have the id and then the date time sensor 1, sensor 2, temperature and uh, humidity and then our target in this case is the offset fault. So the challenge is um, using all these variables can you be able to predict whether a device is faulty or not? That's our main challenge. So this is how the sample submission file looks like. Uh, after creating your model and then making predictions on the test data set, you should create a submission file that looks like this with the two columns, one column being the ID and then the other one being the offset fault. We have been provided with enough uh, data to train a good model. Uh, the trained data set has about uh, almost 300,000 observations that's uh, plenty of data to create a robust models so the next step we 
uh, the next step is to check some statistical summaries of our data set. So the training data set. Uh, from here you can see that the ID is unique across. So most probably you want to be using it for modeling. And then for date time you can see that uh, the first date is uh, 2021 October 15 and then the last date is uh, 2022 January 21. So those are some information that you can derive from this. And then you can also see that uh, sensor 1 and sensor 2 are quite correlated. You can see uh, that the mean uh, for sensor 1 is 40 and then the same for sensor 2 is 38. So there's some correlation there. And then also you can check out the other variables. Uh, we can also check the distribution of our target. Uh, so it seems that uh, there's quite an imbalance in this data with majority of, uh, of the target being zero and the minority being one. So to tackle class imbalance, there are some techniques that you can use. Some of them are uh, SMOT. So SMOT you can use, you can try to use synthetic data uh, and then building models and checking whether the performance in, in increases, increases. You can also use, do oversampling or undersampling. So you have to experiment and choose the technique that gives you the best uh, solution. We can also check the missing if there are missing values in this data. Now we can see that uh, both the train set and the test set have missing values. Um, seems and the train data set it has like one percent across four variables. So you have to handle them before you build a model. You can choose to fill in the missing values with a mod, mean or median, or you can opt to drop the missing values or just fill them with a large number like uh, minus 99999. But in this case, for our modeling purposes, because we are just building a simple model, we'll fill in the missing values that are with zero. We can also check for duplicates. Uh, in this case, there are no duplicates in this data. Next step is to check uh, whether there are outliers in this data set. Uh, for the numerical columns, it seems uh, sensor one and sensor two have quite a, a large number of outliers. So you have to handle this before building a model. Uh, for outliers, some of the techniques you can use to handle them, uh, you can try scaling or transforming the outliers, or you can just opt to drop them entirely. So this is similar to missing values. You have to experiment and then choose a technique that works for you. We can do some feature engineering. Uh, we, have, we have been provided with the daytime um, variable. So from this date, we can generate new features like uh, the day, uh, month, year, even the minutes. Uh, we, have pro we have data even for seconds, but I don't think that is important. But you will have to experiment and then see what works. We can do some ED on the date features, in this case, the month. From this plot, we can see that uh, October has the least number of observations in the, in the training data set, with the December having the highest. So you can look for ways on how to capture this information uh, for modeling purposes. We can also do some ED on the sensor one and sensor two variables. Uh, so we can see that uh, for sensor one, uh, those 
the device uh, when the device is not faulty there is some um, outliers so we have to handle this before modeling Some other thing we can uh, do is uh, check whether there are correlations between the numerical variables. So in, th in this case, we have the temperature, humidity, sensor 1 and sensor 2. Uh, from this plot, we can see that um, sensor 1 and sensor 2 are positively correlated. And then there seems to be no correlation between either sensor 1 or sensor 2 to temperature or uh, humidity. But on the other case, uh, we can see that uh, there is an inverse correlation between temperature and uh, humidity. So when doing fish engineering, you should take care of this. Try to, this should give you a hint on how to create new features from this data. Next, we can try to quantify the, the correlation between variables. Like for sensor 1 and sensor 2, we saw that it's a positive correlation, but in this case, it's a almost 96% correlation. And then the same for humidity and uh, temperature. You can try and check out that one also. So when building machine learning models, um, you have to pro process your data to make sure that uh, all the variables that you are going to use for modeling should be numerical in nature. So in this case, we make sure that uh, all the columns we have, their data type is numerical. So for this data set, we don't have any categorical variables. So I think you are good to go. So the next step is modeling. We have to select the features that we will use for training. And then we also have to choose our target variable. Uh, these are the columns that we use uh, for training. And then our target variable is the offset fault. So we have to split our data into training and tests. Uh, so that we can try to measure our model performance uh, locally. Because we are building a simple model, a baseline, uh, we are using the random forest classifier. You can opt to use other classifiers, uh, but for this case, because these are, a, we are trying to create a baseline model, uh, this will do. After modeling, we can check the results. We can see that uh, we have an accuracy of 66% and then I have one score of 19%. So we, we are trying to improve the score or maximize the score, in this case, uh, accuracy. So you have to try different models with different features with the different parameters and then choose the one that gives you the highest accuracy. Next, we can uh, check out <coughs> the predictions of our model and the misclassifications from our model also. So a confusion matrix gives you uh, the true labels and predicted labels uh, where you can calculate um, precision and recall, you can do more research on that and then see how that information will help you in improving your model performance. From a model that we built, uh, we can see that um, sensor 2 feature is uh, has the highest uh, importance when it comes to predicting whether a device is faulty or not and the year being the least so a technique you can use here, uh, you can choose maybe the top five um, variables and then try to model those and see whether the, uh, the performance of the model will improve. The next part is making predictions. 
uh, from here you can see that uh, <coughs> majority of the predictions that our model made uh, were zero and then the minority were one so do more investigation as to why this happened and then maybe try to create a better model the next step is to download the submission file and then upload it to Zindi. So create a CSV file. And then once you have done that, you can download it and then upload to Zindi. Some tips on how to improve your performance of the model. Uh, you can generate more features uh, by doing aggregates or so for example, you can group by um, sensor one by maybe months or days or years so it's up to you experiment and then choose the one that works for you uh, you can perform more eda to try and get new insights you can try different classifier models you can assemble models or stack models and then there's also an option of experimenting with different strategies of uh, handling missing values and outliers uh, experiment with different types and then choose the one that gives you the best uh, accuracy uh, that's it for the starter notebook i hope you guys have fun as you hack away <laughs>